Good morning, everyone, uh, and welcome to our Workplace Opportunity Week GM. Um, and, and throughout this week, we've got some amazing uh, workplace um, experience and employer encounters uh, offerings. Um, this is actually our second uh, live event this morning, um, and we, we're really excited. Uh, today, or this morning, we've got representatives from Auto Trader, Crystal Doors, and State Fi Stateside Foods. Um, before I do introduce today's um, speakers, I would like to quickly remind you um, of our, our amazing um, uh, timetable this week. I'm not going to talk through it now, but this is all available on, on our GMAX website. Um, each event will be available afterwards. They're all being recorded uh, and available afterwards on, on GMAX as well. Um, so hopefully you can you can tune in to more this week um, and, and get the benefit of, of that live Q&A. There, there will be a, a Q&A section on the right hand side of your screen. So throughout the, 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 as the presenters talk, um, feel free to ask questions. At the end of the presentations, once the, the three, um, three guests today have spoken, uh, we will look at what questions are there and try and answer as many of those as possible. Um, but do feel free to, to type your questions as the, the, um, the presenters do speak through their presentations. So first of all, uh, we've got Heather from Stateside Foods. Um, I'm just going to introduce you, Heather, to, to introduce herself uh, to you. Okay, so I'm Heather. Um, I'm the Corporate Social Responsibility Manager and the Learning and Development Manager at Stateside Foods. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do um, and what I do and what sort of career opportunities we have available at Stateside. Um, so we'll start. So about us, we're a wholly owned subsidiary of the Freiburger Group, which is a German company and they are also chilled food manufacturers. Um, but we basically just produce pizzas for um, our own brand pizzas for the supermarkets. So quite a few of the uh, the lead supermarkets. Um, we are based in West Horton in Bolton and it's quite a large site. Um, it's 24 seven and we do make around 3 million pizzas a week. So it's a lot of pizzas. Um, I unfortunately don't get to see so many of the pizzas, but there's, there's a lot going on here and it is very exciting. And we employ just over a thousand people all here at this site. Um, we're very fortunate because we are in food manufacturing, we are classed as key workers, so we're all still here, um, which is which is a good thing. Um, so yeah, next. So one of my areas, as I said, is corporate social responsibility. Now, for anybody that doesn't know, that's about being a responsible employer, um, about doing the right thing. So it's not just about making the product, it's about looking after our people, making sure we're developing them, um, and that they're safe and happy, um, making sure our products are good quality and that they're safe as well, um, making sure we're looking after the environment. So having as little negative impact as possible whilst we're making our pizzas. And then a big part of what I do is things like this. So in the community, it's educational support. So talking to you guys about careers. Um, we do a lot of community projects, so things like food festivals. Um, and obviously um, I'm the contact for charities as well under that little umbrella. So yeah, so we move on to the next slide. So again, these are my roles. So just a little bit about what my day sort of looks like. So again, I, I'm in contact with sort of community events and charities. Um, I report on our social and environmental impact. Um, I obviously am the careers contact for schools. I look after inclusion and diversity and make sure that everybody is happy coming to work as themselves and that everyone feels comfortable. Um, employee engagement is about making sure everyone feels engaged and feels like they're contributing to something worthwhile and they're all happy. Um, I look after employee benefits. So it's all kind of sort of 
very people based with what I do and I also sort of look after mental health which recently has become quite a large thing um, I look after the website and the newsletter news so anything that needs to go out in um, important information I'm in charge of and obviously I'm looking after sort of the budget means how much money I get to spend on all of those things um, and then under the learning and development side it's about employee training the employees and making sure they're fully equipped to be able to do the jobs they do and I look after our apprentices and the apprentice program which is why it's good that I get to talk to you. So next slide. So a little bit about me, I've been here for 14 years. I came from a bank um, and I joined here um, in the accounts department and on reception. I actually worked my way through my accountancy um, qualifications whilst I've been here, which has been nice because I'll say they do develop people and they, they did fund that for me. Um, I then moved into um, CSR because it interested me. And then also learning and development because I was very interested in looking after our apprentices and I'm currently studying still um, at the grand old age of mid 40s um, <laughs> for CIPD level seven, which is about people development again. Um, so, yeah, they're just a few of the skills I need to do my job generally, sort of coaching and mentoring, presenting like this um, lots of different things. So next, this is our business as a whole. So generally. There's, there's 26 departments on there that give you a general overview of sort of what goes on. So if you're thinking, do you know what, I don't really want to go make pizzas, I want to work in IT. Well, there's places for you to. Um, you might want to do packaging design. You might want to do something with digital skills or finance. You could want to be an accountant like I was. Um, all of those things are available within manufacturing. And this is the great thing. It's It's not sort of you're stuck in a box there's all sort of things you can do um, if you think about the food industry there's I think one in nine jobs are in the food industry um, and it's starting sort of at the farm all the way up to sort of online delivery it can cover abs absolutely any aspect so it is a great place to be and as I say we are sort of quite important at the moment feeding the nation um, so next slide so just so you can get a sort of feel for the for the careers and the roles that we have. So you have your production side, which is sort of in the factories that do operate the machinery that's making the pizzas, the warehouse, the sort of logistics, engineering, which is a really key sort of role to have here. We have more engineers, I think, than any other department, to be honest. Um, and then hygiene and site services. So you would work your way through those roles from operatives and, you know, you can progress through all those sort of manager, leaders, um, right the way up to operations director. So there's lots of places you can go. Support services, so new product development, they're the people designing the pizzas and choosing which ingredients are going on there. So that's quite a nice job to have. They get to taste lots of things to try them out and see if it's if it's good process and packaging so obviously one of their key focuses at the moment is reducing plastic which is quite important um quality make sure everything's sort of you know um abiding by the the laws and regulations and making sure everything is safe commercial who are selling the pizzas purchasing who are buying in the ingredients to make the pizzas i do believe we are the um world's largest purchaser of mozzarella interestingly enough um, planning and procurement decide what we're going to make on each day to make sure we're fulfilling the customer orders, finance and controlling. Obviously, they're paying the bills and sort of um, sending out the invoices for the pizzas that we sell. IT department that come to the rescue when we, we can't go on these meetings and we're having um, digital problems. But they basically everything is run on computers. So, you know, they're a really important department. Um, and then human resources looking after the people, making sure everyone gets paid. Um, learning and development and corporate social responsibility, which I've already told, told you a little bit about health and safety, making sure everyone's safe and continuous improvement, which is constantly looking how we can make things better and more efficient. Um, we do have apprenticeships, degree apprenticeships. So they're a great way to get a degree because it's paid for. You're earning a salary while you are doing the degree. And at the end, you have a job that's that's, you know, it's a guaranteed position at the end of that. Um, we do those with Waterside, with engineering and new plan, also engineering degrees. And then we have the business management degree with Manmet University. Um, and within those degrees, you do make your way around 10 different departments so that you can get a good feel for all of those jobs before you actually decide what it is that's that's going to be your area. So that's a really nice way to get to know the different careers that are available. So next. 
So things that we look for um, when we're looking for a new apprentice, so employability skills, these are the transferable skills that you need to make you employable. So things like communication, leadership, analytical skills, teamwork, being practical, having digital skills, um, you know, having good ideas, being creative. So it's not about sort of knowing actual facts and, and specifics. It's actually having those skills where you can get on with people and communicate well. So they're the kind of things we actually look for. Um, so next. So we have things like assessment centres. Now they are basically like a, if you've ever ever witnessed anything like this, it's like a group activity rather than an interview. So we'll have a few people, say eight to ten people, who will do activities and we will watch people and how they sort of um, interact with one another and how they get on. And I would say that the things we look for are people that show an interest and do get involved. Don't sort of sit back and let the rest of the team do everything for you. Um, because, you know, you want to put yourself out there, as it says, um, listen well to instructions and ask lots of questions. Um, and if you don't agree with something, challenge it. Do stand up for yourself. If you think someone's doing something that you don't think is quite right, make sure you say. But also at the same time, be considerate of the other people in the team um, because you sort of you don't want to be too pushy. You want to be polite, but still get your point across and also be, just be a team player. So they're all the kind of things that we look for in people in an assessment centre. And then moving to my top tips, don't worry too much if you don't know what you want to be when you grow up. It took me a long time to get where I am now and I've been through several jobs um, and it changes all the time. As you learn things, you move on and you want more. Um, don't think that your education's over when you leave school or college and don't all groan at this. It's a good thing that we still keep learning. Um, I'm still learning now and you should always want to improve. Don't worry about what your friends are doing because we are all different. We all have different journeys. There's no right or wrong. And some of us take a, a, a different route to other people and that's fine. Just be a better version of yourself every day. Grab every opportunity that you can. If someone asks you, do you want to do something? Say yeah, say yeah, because when you do one thing, other opportunities arise from that because you, you get noticed and you get seen and you build your network of people. And don't fear failure because you learn more from failure than you do from success. And the only failure, as it says, is not trying. Um, so just give things a go. Don't don't be too frightened. Um, but yeah, they're my sort of and remaining positive. Focus on what you can do rather than what you can't, which is particularly important at the moment when we're all in lockdown again. Look at what you can do. Use your time wisely and, and, and see how you can create opportunities for yourself rather than sort of dwelling on the places we can't go and the friends we can't see. See what you can do with your time. Um, that's it from me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Heather. Um, uh, that was fantastic. If there's any questions, if you can just keep putting them on the, in the Q&A box and, and we'll come to them at the end. Next up, we've got Jennifer from, from AutoTrader. Um, off you go, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. And thanks, Heather. I, I never realised there was so much that goes into making pizza, but I'm fascinated by all the ins and outs of it. Um, so, yeah, as Kevin said, I'm Jen and I work at AutoTrader. So I am an account director. And that essentially means that I am responsible for working with lots of our customers that either um, advertise their cars on AutoTrader and helping them get the most from their advertising on AutoTrader. So you can just go on to the first slide and again. Thanks, Kevin. So who we are now, many of your parents and grandparents, I'm sure, remember AutoTrader as a magazine. Um, we are no longer a magazine, so we stopped publishing the magazine in 2013 and we are now a purely online platform. So we were founded about 40 years ago in 1977 and since then have come on a, a long journey along with our kind of customers and retailers alike. And um, here we are today in 2020. So I think I'm just going to play a short video to give you a bit of an intro to Austria. Hopefully you can all hear the video. Oh, I don't think we can hear the sound. That's OK. Don't don't worry, Kevin. We'll, we'll we can skip over that. Don't worry. It's fine. We'll we will. Um, lots of the stats are in here. So a bit about AutoTrader then. So we are the 12th biggest website, which um, always blows my mind, actually. Um, and you can see there on our most recent stats, I think, given COVID and more and more people going online, we had 67 million cross platform visits in August, which I think is one of our best ever months, which is, is brilliant. 
Um, if you were to combine all the days spent on AutoTrader, it's 20 million hours a day, which again is is a hell of a lot of time. Um, and what? let's have a look at some of the other stats. Um, we have around 40 times more minutes spent on site than all OEMs combined. Now, OEMs is basically manufacturers. So you think of like BMW, Ford, Vauxhall. That's what we mean when we talk about OEMs. So um, yeah, that gives you a bit of an understanding there. We are also more recently, not only can you go on our website and look at used cars, but you can also look at brand new cars as well. So um, lot, lots going on on the website. So um, one of the amazing things about Trader and one of the, the kind of reasons I'm, I'm here um, is our culture. So we um, have a huge focus on equality, on diversity, and um, we have a number of different, we call them guilds, but essentially networks that focus on how we can become a more inclusive and diverse organisation. So just in this example, we have a, a women's network, we have a BAME network, we have um, neurodiversity network. So we have lots of different networks to focus on inclusion and equality. And um, I think as Heather just said earlier, we're all learning, aren't we? And uh, these networks really help us continue to learn um, together and how we can become a more inclusive organisation, which is, is brilliant. Just move on to the next slide. Thank you. So here are just some examples, actually, of some of the initiatives. And um, as much as we all have our core roles, which will vary, but in, in my case, I'll, I'll go into that in a little bit more detail later on. But essentially, you can see we do a lot with Pride. We've we've done a number of different um, marches in Manchester. We do a lot in the kind of sport arena. You can see a lovely picture there of, of netball. Um, we supported Black Lives Matter initiative, which you can see there when um, many people from Water Trader working from home. Unfortunately, we're not classed as, as key workers like Heather, um, but we are all able to work from home, which which is brilliant. Um, and we do lots with the community and ensuring that we're a responsible employer and I guess giving back to the community, which um, I don't think has ever been more prevalent than it is today. We'll just move on to the next slide, Kevin. Thank you. So a little bit about me and my role. So I touched on this earlier. So I am an account director, which essentially means I'm responsible for working with our customers. Um, if you just move on to the next slide. I'm not sure if, if many of you um, will recognise that building, you may not, given that you're not quite at this stage yet, but um, I thought it was important to mention this because I um, did two kind of different degrees, um, a, a law degree and then a, a master's at, at Manchester. And you're probably all thinking, well, why are you working for water trade if you did a law degree and a kind of politics centred master's? And I think the one thing I really wanted to get across to you all today is do what you enjoy at uni, you know, or if, if you even choose to go to uni, but just generally choose things that you enjoy because it doesn't always have to be the case that you kind of move from your chosen field or, you know, even your A-levels or GCSEs, what you've chosen to study. You don't always have to go into that exact field. And there's a lot in the skills you learn, the analytical skills, the team building skills, um, presenting all those different things that you'll be able to apply to different roles. So don't feel like if you're you know, focusing on a particular subject now or in five years time, you necessarily have to go into that field um, because a lot of the skills can be applied um, in, in lots and lots of different workplaces and lots of different subjects as well. So we just move on to the next slide um, and just click a couple of times. There's a few bits on there. So yeah, as I said, so I'm part of the Auto Trader sales team. So I work with some of the largest dealer groups in the UK. Um, some of you will have heard of Arnold Clark maybe um, Inchcape Lookers, and I'm not sure if these are business you've had of, but essentially they're groups that have lots of different car dealerships all across the country. Uh, and my job is essentially to work with those retailers um, or dealer groups and make sure that they're getting the most out of their advertising and ultimately helping them become more profitable um, and do a really good job of advertising on our platform. So if you go on to uk, you'll see lots and lots of different adverts on there, over 450,000 different car adverts. And my job is to really make sure that they're um, doing a good job of that and pricing the vehicles correctly and, and making sure that they're advertising in the right way as well. Um, so in terms of ways to join Autotrader, so there are lots and lots of different ways. Um, and lots of different job opportunities on our careers site as well. So do check out our careers site. You'll see lots, lots of information on there. 
and um, we have got apprenticeships um, and we also have graduate programs as well and um, there's a little bit of detail on there around kind of what you need to to be able to apply for these roles and um, the apprenticeships are brilliant actually kind of just seeing some of the people coming through those apprenticeships um, and the kind of different networks we're able to build and, and wealth of experience and again with the graduate program you, you really do get a really diverse view of auto trader and how the business operates and I think the beauty about all these things is you know you can really explore what you enjoy in these kind of different schemes and really focus on you know what that is and, and push towards that as well but as it says there don't don't get too bogged down with subjects do what you enjoy and, I, and you know I'm sure the rest will take care of itself um, and just lastly, so what do we look for? Well, we have six core values and we actually recruit based on these values as well. So not only do we kind of live and breathe these every day, we do also try and make sure in our recruitment process that we look out for these things. So um, community minded, as I said, a, a huge focus at the moment and, and one that Heather touched on as well, making sure we're giving back to the communities um, charities and that kind of thing. Courageous, my favourite value, um, you know, be bold, um, be creative and, and and go first, say yes. I think Heather touched on that as well. Definitely my, my favourite value. Uh, curious, always ask questions. There is no such thing as a stupid question. If you don't know, probably the likelihood is a lot of other people in the room don't, but just ask questions and, and keep learning. Be determined, never give up. You will be told no a thousand times. I've been told no a thousand times, but um, you, you will get there. So just never, ever, ever give up. I think that's a really important one. Um, be humble as well. It's a, sometimes hard, but I think, you know, make sure that you're mindful around what you're doing and yeah, just have that humble approach in, in life. And, and lastly, be reliable, do what you say you're going to do. I think that that's an important one, but that is kind of the core of all trader in terms of what we look for in our values as well. So yeah, I think that is me. So yeah, Auto Trader Live, check it out on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Um, lots and lots of info on there and also our careers site as well. Thank you. Jen, thank you so much. That was very informative. Again, if there's any questions, we'll, we'll come back to those at the end. Um, next up, we've got uh, Richard Hagen from, from Crystal Doors. Um, very welcome this morning as well, Richard, and it's over to you. Good morning, everyone. And wow, isn't manufacturing absolutely amazing? It's great to hear from Heather and Jenna. Two million pieces a week, that is a lot to eat for one person. And half a million cars on a website, all for sale. It's absolutely incredible what manufacturers do in the UK. It's 20% of the workforce, which is what Heather said, one in nine people. And the majority of people are working in an industry that is moving so, so quickly. What we need from the youngsters of today, people like yourselves who have probably played Fortnite over the weekend that are gaming, you're learning the skills by moving quickly and moving quickly, you're going to be perfect for the workforce in manufacturing. Manufacturing is so exciting in compared to all the other industries. We make that stuff. Everybody else uses that stuff. Everybody else consumes that stuff, but we're in control of what we're going to make. And that's what's so exciting for me at Crystal Doors. Next slide, please. So as everybody, um, Jenny said that she had several careers and, and Heather has obviously moved through different careers as well. Myself, very, very interesting story. Age nine, I was brought up on a farm. I wanted to be a vet. By the age of 13, I got a camera for my birthday. I wanted to be a photographer and then I was good at the sciences. That's what I was good at. So I wanted to be a scientist and then took the A levels, and wanted to be a dentist, but didn't get the grades. But that was OK. I went to the university and did food manufacturing, which is very similar to what uh, Jennifer said. It's um, sorry, Heather said it's absolutely great food manufacturing. But what happened was I then had psoriasis, so I couldn't go into food manufacturing. So then I started working for a company and they, they went under. But that's OK. I bought the company for a few pounds and then got going. And 26 years later, I'm now the managing director. I'm very successful and very much enjoying my job. And it's when you get a job that isn't really a job. It's a hobby. I enjoy getting up every day. The excitement of being able to go to work. That's what you want to find in your job. So it doesn't feel like it's hard work. It's something you have to do. You want something that I jump out of bed. I want to get to work. What's the new exciting things that have happened today? Next slide, please. 
So it's, it's not easy going through life. But as you can see from age 16, um, when, I took my A level, when I took my GCSEs, I had a bad back. I had a really bad back. I had a spine operation straight after my um, GCSEs. I even did all my GCSEs in the headmaster's room laying on my stomach. So they gave me eight Cs. But the last one, that's what you need to be looking at. The third job, I wanted to start my own company and work and I worked really hard and I can tell from Heather and Jennifer straight away. They're so positive. They so wanted to be with it and it's that excitement. They love their jobs. You can tell they love their jobs and that's what we're looking for as an employer. But what's great when we've got a whole team together is we've got Crystal Doors now winning an award in front of the Bank of England, beat all the companies in the UK, which includes Jennifer's and Heather's company. Crystal Doors is number one in the country. You can go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> so what's the roadmap? It doesn't matter if you don't get your GCSEs and they're not very good grades. There's some fantastic apprentices. The best apprentice, if you want to have a look on a website, is um, Make UK. So if you search in, the, the uh, you are the future makers. And that's a brilliant understanding of uh, a video of going through apprenticeship. And then for those who go beyond university, want to go into the research, then you've got something like Innovate and look up sustainable innovation. And that's about the academic research. So what we're looking for now in pizzas is how do we make those sustainable? How do we change the packaging? How do we get a circular economy? How do we start preventing the climate change that we've got today? So what we've got is manufacturing doesn't cover just one or two things. It covers everything you touch. The only thing that's left behind is nature. So if it's a tree and it's growing, then that's nature. But everything else humans have made. And that's what makes our world so exciting. Next slide, please. So this is Crystal Doors. So we are a sustainable manufacturer. Uh, we are going for what's called B Corporation which is a very good understanding where the employees are like the owners of the company. So therefore it's part of not they've got the money and we haven't. It's a, it's a case of spreading that money to everybody. So everybody feels part. So that's like the cooperative that started in Rochdale in Manchester. So what we do is we do advanced manufacturing where we've got high tech stuff. So a bit like when we had the lockdown, Crystal Doors made all the overbed tops for the Nightingale's hospitals to look after people. And on the right hand side, you can see a drone picture of our factory. Look at all those solar panels. And then we've got a big burner to be able to burn all our waste on site and produce heat. So it's an exciting place to be. Next slide, please. And as Heather and Jennifer said, it is about continuous training. You think you're at school and you're learning and then you leave school and you get a job. When you get a job, you're going to learn even more. I'm learning faster than I ever learned before because I'm now looking at the internet and wanting to get ahead. So I'm constantly learning. I give presentations and I receive lots and lots of information. So the centre picture is one of our big presses uh, and that's the one that puts the vinyl onto the doors. Then on the right hand side, that's the CNC. So it's a big drill that goes into a huge sheet, but the machine automatically picks up the sheets puts them in the middle, routes them out, pushes them off, picks up the next one, all automatic. So a bit like the pizza factory, which that is 24 seven, that is just continuously going, where ours is more at batch. So ours is batch production rather than continuous production. Next slide, please. So for mine, the takeaways, and the, the very, very important, and all, all of our takeaways are important. It's work hard on what you enjoy, strive to be your best. Don't just do the minimum work, find out everything and really understand, especially now we've got the internet, you can learn so much. So list your three and best, three worst subjects and best subjects. On the three that you like, learn them until you can teach others. Because if you can teach, that means you really understand it. And then on the other one, the ones that you don't know, talk to your friends, talk to other people that do know what the subject's about and learn from them. So you're then learning about team building, you're learning about determination, you're learning all those skills that we require as an employer. And like me, be passionate about what you want in life. Follow your dreams, then the doors of opportunity will open. Think of a job you'd like and search on the internet and share with others. Find somebody with that job and write down what, qualifi what qualifies you, what qualifications do you need, what, what do you need to do to match that job? the good bits and the bad bits. 
all careers have, but the goals and dreams that you have gives you a purpose in life. Without that purpose, why, why are you doing it? Is it just for the money? We've got to enjoy life. We've got to have fun. The choice is yours. So what we do is re reverse engineer. So Jeff Bezos, who's now the richest man in the world, that's what he does. That's what Elon Musk did to come up with the Tesla cars is work backwards. So you start at the end point and then you work backwards. So start what we can do now to research the career. And enjoy and thank you very much for your time and best of luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Richard. Again, uh, wonderful information and uh, advice uh, in particular for the young people listening this morning. Um, we haven't had any questions through yet, but if, if we haven't, I know I've got a few that I'm sure um, our, our audience would be um, delighted to, to hear answers to. So I'm going to ask you one by one, just a couple of questions. And if you could just um, spend a few minutes um, answering those, that would be, would be fantastic. Um, I'll go back to, to Heather to, to begin with. Um, just give us a second, Heather, and I'll share my screen. Um, so Heather, um, with uh, state fi stateside foods, um, just wanted to, to ask you about your, your customer base. Um, if Sorry to put you on the spot, but it, it, is it UK wide? Is it further afield? Um, could you just give us a bit of um, more information on that? And also a bit more about the, the products. Is it just a one flavour of pizza? How many pizzas? Is it just pizzas? Is it other products as well? OK, so our customer base, um, we have our sort of biggest customers are Aldi, Asda, Co-op, um, Morrison's. Um, so some really big sort of supermarkets. But what we do is we sell the own brand. So you won't see stateside foods on the pizza. It will say sort of Co-op's own pizza um, or Aldi's own pizza. If you go into Aldi, they're in the black boxes with the specially selected logo on. Um, and the, the, the all ranges. So we'll start from sort of the kids size pizzas and the basics pizzas. Um, and the interesting thing is we have two factory sites. So one is more automated, which does sort of your, your, your sort of high speed, um, your basics, the sort of like um, lower tier, we call them. And then you've got your sort of your high, sort of your posh, what we call the posh pizzas that are more hand topped. They're a little more artisan, the sort of, you know, placing the little olives on and things um, to sort of like your portable eating mushrooms. So yeah, there's lots of different and they go from every sort of tier, sort of your basics. If you're just wanting a quick meal to shove in, in the in the oven for a family quickly, quick tea, or if you're having a, a dinner party and you want something a little more sort of upmarket, um, it goes right from the bottom right all the way to the top. Um, and we do have the two sites, as I say. So one is more automated for the basic pizzas that sort of whiz through very quickly. Um, and then there's the hand top where there's a lot more people in that site um, because it's sort of the things are being hand applied um, in there. So, yeah. Thanks, Heather. I've got one last question for you because I'm a massive fan of the okay. factory. Um, and, and, and some of these factories are just absolutely massive. And it comes to the end of the production line. They're all stacked then in, into the boxes onto pallets. So I presume that's similar to yourself, where you'll have maybe a, a, a warehouse. Um, how long might, might the pizza sit there? How long is it until they're on the back of that lorry and shipped off to, to where they're going? It all depends, but I'll be honest, not very long because the sort of um, the short shelf life wants to get into the supermarket because they're fresh, they're not frozen pizzas. Um, so they're just sort of chilled. We do have a deep freeze storage site on facility. So everything's sort of um, coded as it leaves to keep the shelf life as long as possible. Um, but yeah, we've got all the facilities on site. Everything sort of stays here, but it does move quite quickly because we don't do sort of, you know, you sort of if you look at someone like Heinz, you can have a tin of beans. I'm sure it would last a very long time, um, but a pizza, not so much. So we do. We're very fast moving and it is very sort of um, can be quite frantic sometimes, especially the build up to Christmas and especially when we sort of first went into lockdown, sales went up quite quite a bit because people were sort of filling the freezers with pizzas. Um, but yeah, it can be quite manic because it is um, it's not long, long shelf life product. It is just pizza that we do. We don't do anything else. Brilliant. Thanks, Heather. We do have a question come in, but I, I, I wanted to just quickly go around um, 
Jan and, and Richard, and then we'll come back to the audience questions. So if you just bear with me for a second, I'll get that answered. Jan, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, can I can I just ask you in regards to Auto Trader, the range of of different roles that are available in the business? Yeah. Um, and also just on that as well, this is really putting you on the spot. Are you are you can you can you let the young people know the number of employees? Yes. Yes, great questions. I think they're included in the video, but oh, I think I'm muted. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you. Oh, perfect. Okay. Um, yes, so firstly, we do have a wide range of roles. Obviously, I spoke quite a lot about my own role in kind of sales side of things, but absolutely, we have um, marketing roles, we have developer roles, we have um, product design roles. Um, product owner roles um, literally yeah we have every kind of um, role you could think of really we have over 800 people that work at Autotrader and we have two offices so we have one in Manchester which is our head office which we have about 500 people in um, and then we have one in London in King's Cross as well which is a little bit smaller we probably have about 150 people that sit in that office as well but no absolutely there's a huge uh, diverse range of roles whether that be coding and um, yeah marketing digital roles design roles yeah you name it we have it brilliant thanks Dan um, Richard um, just a similar question to you that I asked Heather in, in regards to um, the products that you make can, can you just um, go into a bit more detail about those different types of products and um, your customer base uh, is it again UK wide or, or further afield so Crystal Doors manufactures the little kitchen cupboard doors that you open in the kitchen or the bedroom doors, but we've then diversified is um, Premier Inn. We do all the refurbishments, hospitals, we do all the overbed tops, um, shop fitting. We do WH Smith, the airports at this moment in time that are being renovated uh, and we do export. So we export to Canada, America, Australia, all the way around the world, but we manufacture a component uh, so some manufacturers manufacture the whole thing, so this is the whole pizza and the box and they've got to put it all together, but you'll have a manufacturer that'll just make the pepperoni for those pizzas and they'll make it in volume. So a bit like they were saying about the mozzarella, I couldn't believe that. Biggest in the world. How many buffaloes must be running around the field for Heather? It, it's incredible when we, we try and put it all together. An example is the cup of tea. 57 companies are involved in making a cup of tea. So Crystal Doors is just one little component helping lots and lots of other manufacturers and that's called supply chain. And we've all got to fit in the supply chain. So we've got Heather, a thousand employees. We've got Jennifer, 800 employees. We've got Crystal Doors, 37. So we've got the automation, but it means that me as the boss, I know all my employees. And 60% of you, if you go into any job, you'll be working for a small to medium sized company rather than a large company. In a large company, it's difficult because you will never see realistically the boss boss. You end up seeing the managers and therefore it's a different culture. So you've got to try and work out, do you want it more family orientated or do you want this big corporate where you've got the sort of the global brand like BMW that sell cars or Ford, big, big companies. Oh, brilliant, Richard. Um, and it just goes to show, uh, just because there's a small number of people working in a company, it's, it can be just as successful. And can I ask you just on that, Richard, with those 37, I'm not asking you exactly tell me what they all do, but give me some idea of the types of jobs that, that, that those people do. So we have drivers, we have people who process the orders, but the majority are on the factory floor. So we'll have people who will drive the forklift trucks, which is the same as, as Heather's company, um, but you've then got people running the robots. So we have robots. Um, we have people programming the CNCs. We have people pressing the doors. So they work as a very close team where you'll be able to walk from one side of the factory to the other within a few minutes, where something like the big food industries, you're set in one little department and that's your job. You'll be just focused on one little machine working as a massive, huge company and you're just one little component where ours everybody knows everybody so it's a proper little family affair where everybody is helping each other but we've all got to be continuously learning amazing thank you um so we've got a question in from and a, and a fantastic question it is too um 
who might want to go first. Uh, so do your companies have a policy regarding recruitment of young people with SAND special educational needs and disabilities? Uh, Richard, just nodding your head. You're on mute, Richard, sorry. We, we, we have two disabled people working for us at the moment and we have absolutely no issues whatsoever. We're, we're disabled, confident, and I think I saw from, the, was it Jennifer's, that is disabled um, leaders, and it, it's part of the inclusion now is diversity and unity. As part of all what companies have to do is the inclusion of absolutely everybody. So 100% yes. Yeah. Sorry, uh, Jen, can you just uh, give, give some info on that, please? Yes, of course. Yes, we do as well. I know I spoke a little bit about um, we've got a um, like neurodiversity and um, special educational needs guild that folk have a, can focus on that. And we are also um, we've just been audited by the National Autism Society and I, I believe we're the world's first company to be awarded as an autism friendly employer. Um, but if, if you go on our website, you'll see our office space. It's a shame that the video couldn't play, but it was in the video as well. But um, we do also kind of have different rooms and we appreciate that everybody works in different ways. And obviously everyone's got their own kind of um, needs and ways of working. So we have a quiet room and things like that. If, you know, um, people prefer to work in that way or if they need a bit of space just to, to kind of uh, rest or whatever that might be. So, yeah, it is absolutely on our radar and, and something we we kind of live and breathe. I think you're on mute, Kevin. Sorry. Um, so Heather, I don't know if, if you wanted to add anything on that. Yeah, again, it's really important to us that, you know, it's th these jobs are available to everybody. Um, we've actually just joined a forum with the co-op. Um, they've got lots of employers together who are working together on inclusion and diversity um, specifically for this purpose so that we can all sort of share what, what we do well um, what we might need a bit of support with because we, we don't always have all the answers, unfortunately. But um, yeah, we, we don't discriminate in any way. We are very much sort of, we recruit on, on our behaviours very much like Jennifer said earlier. You, you, you know, we recruit on sort of attitude and um, we certainly don't discriminate for, for sort of send reasons. Um, yeah, we want, we want jobs to be available for all. Um, and this is the whole point of the forum because we've realised how important it is that we've got all these businesses now working together um, so that we can do more um, and push it more because it is so important. Um, so, yeah, it's a key. It's a key focus for us at the moment. Thanks, Heather um, and, and Jen and, and Richard for, for some excellent responses. Um, so we've got another question in from Atherton High School. And that is, what are companies doing with regards to reducing their carbon footprint? Serious. Crystal Doors is number one in the company, the country. If you have a look at the Crystal Doors website, we've just recently won the IEMA award for carbon and energy transition. Uh, I think it's fantastic that it's an SME that's beaten all the big boys. We've beaten everybody uh, and it's hands down because it is a small team and we can act very, very quickly. Big companies really, really struggle um, to be able to adjust overnight. Now, obviously, COVID-19 has caused the economy to have to adjust. It's caused everybody to have to adjust. But very large companies, if, if we said to Heather, can we change the pizzas into can you make ice creams? They would say no, it will take years. But for a small company like Crystal Doors, we've addressed um, reduction in carbon um, rapidly, which is the reason why we're going for B Corporation, which is an international standard, which looks after people, which was once mentioned, looks after the environment, looks after the, everything. And that's what companies have to have is their purpose. It's no longer that employees, uh, 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 they're, they're now looking at the companies that they want to work for. And certainly at your age, you need to find a company that is meeting all the targets that you see as the value of who you are for what sort of company you want to work for. So well done. Great question. Thanks, Richard. Good answer as well. Thank you. 
Um, any more questions? Um, I don't see any coming in at the minute. Um, so we, we will finish a little bit earlier, but I just wanted to say thank you, um, Heather. Thank you, Jen. And thank you, Richard, for your participation this morning. Absolutely fantastic um, presentations full of information, advice, um, and, and, and those couple of questions as well. Thank you for, for sending those in. Um, you can follow us uh, on, on Twitter at bridge, GM, at bridge underscore GM at C different um, hub, um, where you'll get updates on the daily events. You can join the events from that the links on, on there. Um, today, following this, um, after, uh, after this afternoon at, at two o'clock, uh, we've got live Q&A with Recycle for GM. Um, at 3.15, we've got myth busting for parents and carers. Um, so we, we look forward to those couple of events this, after, this afternoon. Um, and tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday, we've got loads more happening. Um, you can find out uh, more about these and join these events if you visit gmax.co.uk. Go to our events section and, and, and you can access those from there. These events are, are all recorded, so if you've got friends or uh, colleagues who couldn't dial into these events this week, then they will be available again on GMAX where you can, can access them um, and, and do some um, some activities maybe with, with the young people um, after after this week. Um, you, you will have 15 minutes. If you're sat in a, in a classroom now, why not have a, a further discussion about what you've just heard this morning? Um, maybe a teacher led session on, on so, so, some more, um, you know, points that, that you've picked up from, from listening to the, the three fantastic presentations. Of this um, but that is all from, from us this morning. Uh, and again, just a massive thank you to those who have tuned in. And, a, and again, a massive, massive thank you to our three speakers this morning. Um, thank you. Have a lovely uh, rest of the day. Fantastic week. And we hope to, to see you joining more of our live sessions this week. OK, all the best. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone.